Welcome to the Zweig Letter Podcast, putting architectural, engineering, planning, and environmental consulting experts straight talk in your ear. These podcasts deliver great interviews with industry leaders and Zweig Group's three decades of invaluable research, leadership, management, marketing, client, and HR advice directly to you, free of charge. The Zweig Letter Podcasts let you develop personally and professionally, wherever you are. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Zweig Letter Podcast. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I am here today with none other than Mark Zweig, chairman of Zweig Group. We are here to talk about a a topic that is important to him as, as much as it is to me, and that's really about the glue that holds your firm together. And I'm talking about those unsung heroes in your organization that really make things happen on a daily basis. You know, the people that answer the phones, the people that make copies, the people that run to the post office, the people that send out all your packages, the people that um, respond to information or inquiries that come through the door and, and, and make sure that they get to the appropriate parties. You know, these individuals that I'm talking about, they're the people that pay the bills for you on a regular basis that make sure that things don't bounce and make sure that, that ledger balances are up to date. But we, we, Mark recently wrote an article in this white letter about don't forget about the other people in your firm. And, I read that article and it really just it really reminded me of the importance of making sure that as as you operate your design firm, you make sure to include everybody in the process and you make sure to acknowledge everyone. And so, Mark, I'd love to get some some thoughts and feedback from you on this particular article. And maybe you might want to share the backstory of why you were even encouraged to write this in the first place. Well, I don't know that I was encouraged to write it, but I guess I was inspired to write it. Okay. But uh, yeah, we twisted your arm there. So okay. yeah, yeah. No, it's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all uh, good. It's a pretty simple idea, and and most people in this business uh, know what I'm talking about. That there's always been a cultural difference between the people. All, pretty much every firm has this sort of. The billable people versus the non-billable people, yeah, sort of thing going yeah. on, and it's it's really unfortunate. Um, you know, it's it, it's the the superiority of those who who do work that clients pay for, and everybody else is there to just you know support them in some way. And and some firm, you know, the principals verbalize that it's not just that you suspect that they think that way. They do think that way. Right. Right. And, and it's, it's just detrimental to the morale of the place. You know, it's, um, you just, you see the negative consequences of that people who are doing these other jobs and these other jobs are important. The marketing stuff, the accounting stuff, the it stuff, the, the phone answer, whatever. Okay. It's all, it's all important. And it affects everybody how well those jobs are done. Yeah. And those people don't need to be sort of, you know, um, second class. They don't, they don't want to be, uh, you know, they don't want to feel like they're not important. They don't want to feel like they're not doing something that's, that's, that's critical to the organization that, that's valued. Okay. And so, you know, I just think, we need to. I, I'm not sure there's any easy cure all for the this problem. It, it's 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 sort of you know um, it's it's not hard to understand that the people who sell and do the work are going to be the ones who are who are um, thought of as more important. But nevertheless, we better figure out a way to make these other people feel like they're important too, or we're going to lose the good ones. And the good ones are so critical. Yeah. They make yeah. a huge difference in in the firm and and how well it does and what its image is in the market and how s- smoothly it operates as a business. Right. You know, it's it's like if you were a car company and the only people that did anything that 
were valued were, were the assembly line workers and the, the designers and, and no and the and the salespeople and okay. the, the designers weren't critical or whatever because they weren't you know I don't know it just seems like it's it's critical to be thinking about this yeah you know if you look at the turnover rate in some of these jobs it's very high and it's costly for the business then you look at the business and you go oh the average AE firm's got a 70 to 80 day collection period. What the hell is that about? Right. Right. Why would anybody tolerate that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe they need some better people doing the billing and collecting and yeah. reviewing the contracts. I mean, I don't know, but it's like, you know, you can just go down the list of, of whatever it is and go, why don't they do a better job with that? I mean, I, I saw some graphic design that was done recently by an engineering company was so horrible. I, I just, I was, I was literally speechless <laughs> by the quality of it, as bad as it was. And I thought, I can't believe these guys, as big as they are, couldn't afford to have a decent graphic designer here. Yeah. And then I started thinking about the firm and its culture. And I thought, you know what? If they had a good graphic designer, they probably quit because they treat their, their, revenue producers like gods and everybody else is treated like they're lower than whale shit. Yeah. I mean, it's just, there is such a difference in the, in the, in the culture, you know, and, and of the, how people are treated. Yeah, absolutely. And so, just to clarify that it doesn't get much lower than that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've seen it, you know, at the university of Arkansas, I've taught in two different colleges there. And it's interesting to me how much better one of them treated me um, as, you know, I started as an adjunct and now I'm a regular faculty member, but I was an adjunct in the other, in two different departments and, and just how I was treated was, uh, or two different colleges, how I was treated was markedly different as an adjunct from one college to the other. Really? In one case, you're included in all the faculty meetings, you get an office, you get a mailbox slot. Um, you're on all electronic communications that any faculty member would get. You're invited to all faculty meetings, et cetera, okay? yeah. parties, whatever. In the other place, you are virtually ignored. Hmm. And it's because, you know, uh, in the tenured track faculty are treated like gods. Yeah. But you're nothing. So which one do you think somebody wants to work for? Well, the first one I would say, you know, exactly. I mean, it, it sounds like it was a, it was, uh, I mean, just two distinct cultures existed. Yeah. But they're both, in both cases, it's the, the, the tenure track faculty members are like your registered professionals. Right. Okay. Right. And, and anybody else is like somebody else. Yeah. You know, they're the, the dog meat. people or the, yeah. the, the, the technicians or whatever. Um, the, and so it's, it's just really, I think it's really important to be cognizant of this and, you know, include these people, make them feel like they're important. Um, we do a really good job of that. Um, at the Walton college, like we have our faculty and staff meetings. They're always together. The faculty and staff is included. Okay. That makes a big statement. Yeah. yeah you know? Yeah. Gathering everybody together at one time. Well, I mean, and I think one of the one of the phrases that you used is all for one and one for all. And and I think if you want to create that environment where everybody's bought into it, you have to make sure that you're taking care of everybody from the top to the bottom. Yeah. You know. You really do. But it's it's unfortunate, but it's the reality of our industry that it's not very common. Yeah, yeah. Um, any stories come to mind that you can think of with regard to just the the difference maker that even just regular folks can can make in an organization? I mean, I think things like open book management are part of it. I think trying to you know, find ways to publicly praise the people who did something good. Yeah. You know, let's, let's talk about how we just collected 20 grand that we thought was a write-off because Sue over in accounting, you know, figured out how to get it. I mean, yeah. that's important. Uh, you know, yeah, we celebrate the job we just won, but do we ever celebrate those other things? Right. You, yeah. you, you know, you, and I remember a story that you told of a former, um, 
a bookkeeper that we had on staff that was pretty deft at getting money from some, yeah. from some, some pretty Very strange good. places. Yeah. And, uh, I remember you telling a story about her being able to, to get some money from a firm that had owed money to In Jordan to, for yeah. like two to three years. It was yeah. Two to three year old AR from Jordan. I'm like, <laughs> so, forget that. We got it. Right? Yeah. I was like, yeah. Yeah. You want to make a big deal about that though. Right. You know? Exactly. Exactly. It's, it, it's like, why act like, oh, you know, we won't say anything about that. So then they'll just expect a raise. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, they probably should get a raise. That's more like probably found money in some instances. Yeah. So, yeah. So, well, no, that's cool. I, I, um, I think it's important for people to hear, just to hear this story. And I certainly want to encourage you to read, if you can, check out that uh, edition of the Zweig letter and that article. Don't forget about the other people in your firm. It was from uh, May 14th. Actually, it was just a week ago, really, um, uh, from the timing of this recording, but certainly want to encourage you to, uh, to read this and share it with other leaders within your organization. And just remember that it takes more than just you guys, you guys listening to this to, to get it done. And, and, in most, or if, if not in all cases, it, it takes a village, if I may use that overused uh, expression, but it literally does take a village to run a company. Um, just like it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to run a company. And that's everybody from from top to bottom. Uh, and everybody needs to be all in. And so I really want to encourage you to get your people on board and and make sure that you're recognizing them, like Mark said, in a timely manner. And even when it's something small, you should still recognize people because that sometimes that's all it takes. And, um, too often we don't even do those little things in order to, um, you know, set ourselves apart in the mind of those that are coming in every day to, to really do what amounts to a yeoman's task when it comes to the amount of work that's in front of them. And sometimes it's for very thankless, um, opportunities and, and, and sometimes it's not for all the money in the world, but, um, but they do it day in and day out. So really want it to, um, encourage you to use this, take this opportunity to recognize those individuals in your firm that would be quote unquote, the glue that bring it all together and make it all happen. So, but, uh, well, Mark, thanks so much, man, for, for sharing those thoughts. This is a, a little bit of a shorter episode today, but it's a point that we really want to drive home to our, our listening audience. And, and it's something that we don't always get to talk about. So I really want to, uh, to, um, to thank you for, for sharing your thoughts on this and big shout out to the people in, in our firm that make it all happen, um, on a regular basis. And like Bree and Anna and so many other people that just are really getting it done on a regular basis. We have outstanding interns. We're, it, we're just really fortunate to have a great group of people. And we just have individuals that we can always count on to get the job done no matter what. So whether it, it starts at the top with people like Mark and Chad Kleinens, who's the CEO and president, but you know, everybody here is all in and, uh, we treat each other that way and we respect each other. And it certainly, um, shows in how we interact with and work with our clients and the, the level of service that we offer. So, um, definitely, uh, not that we're an example, uh, beyond any other firm that's out there. I'm sure there's some other great firms that are doing some amazing things, but take it for what it's worth. Treat your people right all the time and it will pay back in spades in the long run and they'll, and it won't necessarily all be financial. Um, but it will just create a quality, um, a quality work experience for everybody on your team. And when people see you treating even the, the, and I won't call it the lowest of folks, but even when you, when they see you treating just your entry level people with a high level of respect and care and consideration, it will resonate with everyone and it will go a long way in uh, creating um, a level of what I like to call um, by any means necessary mentality from your employees, because that's what you want in order to get the job done. So thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Zweig Letter Podcast. I thank Mark Zweig for joining us once again. I want to remind you about a couple of things that we're doing here at Zweig Group a little differently. One thing is we have a gift for you. Just because you're a listener, uh, because you are taking the time to uh, put us between your ears and taking what we have to share, we want to gift 
to you a digital copy of the Zweig Letter on a weekly basis. That's right. The Zweig Letter comes out every week, 48 weeks a year, and we would like to gift that to you. It comes out every Monday at noon. And if you visit ZweigGroup.com and just click on the Zweig Letter, you will be able to uh, enter your email address. I promise you no spam, uh, but that will enter you into getting a digital subscription to the Zweig Letter weekly. It's free. Have at it. If you'd like to sign up your whole firm, uh, we've had firms of 600 people sign up for the Zweig Letter at once. It's 100% free. We can make that happen. Just check us out. Uh, check out the show notes, and we'll get you some additional information on that, and we'll get you set up right away uh, to get everybody in your firm a copy of the Zweig Letter. In addition, folks, just a couple of months ago, Mark and I rolled out the first of several uh, new videos um, from our Z Learning training program, which is online continuing education um, offerings that we have here at Zwei Group. And we're covering everything from project management, business development, marketing, branding, um, sales. We're spending time talking uh, about leadership development, uh, soft skills, financial management for non-financial managers, any topic that you can think of that is that is necessary to run your firm successfully, we are either are in the process of creating a, a training for that, or we have started creating trainings for that that we think you would want to check out. We have four videos that are actually complete. Uh, they are on our website. Just visit zweiggroup.com com forward slash Z learning for more information. Check out your videos. Uh, there are sample videos available online. Uh, there are a number of uh, means for you to check out what we have to offer from a continuing education perspective. And the best thing about it is that you do get continuing education or professional development hours for these trainings. Um, we are certified with AIA, SMPS, um, SHRM, uh, ACEC for some um, trainings that we do. And um, we certainly want to encourage you to take part in these programs when and where possible. So that's all we have for today. Thank you so much again for listening to the Zweig Letter Podcast. Remember, we are available wherever great podcasts can be found. Check us out there. And as always, we would love it if you would share this podcast with a friend. Remember, sharing is caring. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn. And this has been another edition of the Zweig Letter Podcast. We are elevating the industry one podcast at a time. Won't you join us? Take care and have a great day. Thanks for tuning in to this Zweig Letter Podcast episode. If you want more wisdom and inspiration, in addition to information about M&A, strategic planning, HR, and marketing your firm, Subscribe now to the digital version of The Zweig Letter free of charge. Just visit thezweigletter.com slash subscribe and leave your email address. Your free subscription will begin immediately.